Well, we've come to the end of another week, brothers and sisters. It's Friday, and today in our devotion, we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. While, you are, while you're opening your Bible there, I want to encourage you to be in God's house this Sunday. Um, we have our three worship services at First Baptist, our contemporary worship services at 8.30 and 11 o'clock, our traditional worship service in the middle at 9.45, and of course, we want you to come to Life Group, or some of you think of it as Sunday School, we want you to join us for that as well. That's this Sunday here at First Baptist. All right, um, today's devotion is the first two verses of chapter 7, and it's really kind of a follow-up to what I was talking about yesterday. You'll remember yesterday in chapter 6, uh, verse 3 is the one I talked about, giving no cause for offense in anything so that the ministry will not be discredited. <laughs> I try to say that. Discredited. <laughs> oh. But anyway, what spoke to me was chapter 7, verse 1 and verse 2. It's kind of a follow-up to that verse from yesterday and the clergy sex abuse and so on. Therefore, Having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And then verse 2, make room for us in your hearts. We wronged no one. We corrupted no one. We took advantage of no one. <clears throat> now, verse 1, Paul is saying that the attitude all of us are to have, whether you're you know, a pastor or a lay person whether you're someone who's been a believer, disciple for years, or you're a relatively new disciple, is, is to cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit. That involves confession, but confession also involves repentance. Confession is not just saying, I'm sorry, and then, you know, I go on and do it again. It's a, it's a change. True repentance, true cleanse. When we, when we receive forgiveness, we're cleansed. That sin is removed. It's washed away. Praise God for that. From all defilement of the flesh and spirit, the flesh, the things we do, the spirit, the inside, the inner man, your thoughts, your attitudes, perfecting holiness in the in the fear of God, um, perfecting, developing holiness, growing in holiness, and the word translated perfecting is in the continuous action. Um, Greek verbs are a little different than English, and of course, the New Testament was originally written in Greek. And in Greek, you can have what's called punctiliar action. It happens one time and one time only. You can have kind of a, mm, it you know happened didn't happen happen you know sporadic, but you also have a, a, a an action that is continuous, it's ongoing, and that's the word here, perfecting continually, ongoing. It's it's not hit and miss, but I'm. Just consistently, consistently growing, consistently perfecting holiness, becoming more holy, doing it in the, in the fear of God with a reverence for God. And by the way, cleansing ourselves not only means confessing our sins, but it means giving up sin. Because if I keep sinning, guess what? I'm still dirty. So we're to be we're we're to be growing, and then Paul kind of applies that to himself. Uh, I've mentioned in previous devotions that some of the people in Corinth uh, questioned Paul's apostleship and his integrity. And he says to them in verse 2, make room for us in your heart, love us. He said, and he's talking about when he was with them. He said, we wronged no one, we corrupted no one, we took advantage of no one. And I think, as, as I mentioned yesterday, another reason that verse stood out to me is because I, I was in Anaheim, California, when I read this and wrote in my journal, and we just finished the SBC and it dealt with clergy sex abuse. And I've heard the stories of so many survivors of clergy sex abuse. Um, the damage done is grave. And pastors who have affairs, pastors who abuse not just children, but adults in their church sexually. And most of the time, yes, it's a, a, a pastor abusing a woman, but it can be, you know, a teenage boy, et cetera. Um, they do the opposite of what Paul did. People who, men, pastors um, who, do, who do those things, they do wrong someone. They do corrupt someone. They do take advantage of someone. And so many survivors struggle the rest of their life with their faith 
because of the damage done to them by a wolf in sheep's clothing. I am a proponent because I think the Bible is and God is that when it comes to ethics and moralities, <clears throat> morality, <clears throat> pastors, there's a higher standard for us. There just is. And churches don't lower it. Expect ethically and morally more of a pastor. God does. Love, not, don't expect perfection. But don't make room in your pulpit for somebody who sleeps around, who abuses people. Just don't make room for them. People are damaged when you do. That's the word for today. I'll see you Sunday in worship and then Monday with another devotion as we continue making our way through 2 Corinthians. We'll be in chapter 8. God bless you. Have a great weekend, everybody.